After 9 hours of playing, the time factor is still the largest contributor to the evolution factor, which has just entered the biter big boy territory. It seems like once the outer wall is breached, the inner wall will fall much faster as it takes the flamethrowers a good bit longer to target the inner wall attackers. Good to keep in mind. Anyway, meanwhile we've built 10 oil refineries against the western flamethrower wall. And not long after, we fit plastics against the back of the stone mine. We'll switch on oil refining now, but we will keep production to a minimum on an as needed basis. That means we won't use buffer tanks until after we've unlocked the much more efficient advanced oil processing technology. Sure, it may seem like we have a lot of oil now, but with our sole oil source dwindling rapidly, we will quickly chew through our supply once we start some real production. Also, until we understand just how strong the new big biters actually are, we have temporarily stopped researching. This will slow down production and thus pollution output, resulting in smaller biter attacks. This will hopefully reduce the chance of breaches as well as give us some valuable extra time to try and set up the complicated blue signs. So let's check out the first attack with just a single big biter in the group. He walks easily through lingering ground fire, reaches and ignores on the wall, but still dies quickly to the direct stream of burning oil, which does much more damage than ground fire. The big biters are more dangerous in another way though, while a breakthrough of some medium biters still can be dealt with with some grenades, we currently do not have any backup to kill a big biter. So besides regular time costly interruptions to fully repair the wall, we could really use some help to make sure the walls stay up. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes. Yes you are! I think we finally found the help we needed. Him, the holy tree of wisdom. He whose roots reach out to all four walls and with his binding strength will keep this base together. What, you are thinking about bots to automatically repair the walls? Oh ye of little fate, what a heathen and materialist mindset. You should have some faith in the divine powers of the tree. Um, but I guess even divine entities perhaps wouldn't mind some assistance from repair bots. Then the tree immediately uh, helps us design this blue sign set up from hell. Ah, I sure hope we have not awoken an ancient sleeping power we cannot even begin to understand. Actually, it may look like a tangled mess of belts and inserters, but it's really not that bad. The output belt goes down the middle, while the upper and lower belt will supply the blue science ingredients. And it actually saves 3 tiles of space to have all belts on the inside. Not insignificant. So, while we first fitted the blue science assemblers in a convenient location near the lab area, we are still far from actually having blue science, as we still need to set up all 3 ingredients. Sulfur, engines and red chips. Let's start with a simple one. Water and petroleum gas make sulfur, and for future use we also set up sulfuric acid. Then it took me like 20 minutes of puzzling on how to cram these engines in here. This spaghetti is getting out of hand, isn't it? Anyway, we split off iron here to make gears and pipes for the engines, which snake down under this inconveniently placed random tree here in the middle of the base. Then we draw down steel in such a cursed way that even Truppen would reject this material for his cursed Factorio video. The steel ends up on the wrong side of the belt however, so we abuse a filter splitter to magically switch sides. Then somehow it all ends up at the engines and there's even space to output the engines on the same belt. That's actually all four of the ingredients for flamethrower turrets, so we can automate them right here in the military section of the base too. But for now we want to prioritize the engines going to blue signs, so we use a filter inserter to prevent it from drawing engines off the belt. We can later hand feed engines in this chest to control both when and how many flamethrowers are produced. Since
since we have an iron crisis upon us, we definitely don't want to overproduce these iron hungry turrets. All in all, it takes a whopping 1000 iron to produce just 4 of these bad boys. Our iron patch is rapidly dwindling and down to 140k already, and we haven't even produced a single blue science pack yet. Meanwhile, the first two walls of the oil outpost have been breached, and the final wall is down to just a couple hit points. Anyway, after setting up all of that, we decided there is enough space for a fourth pair of green chip assemblers. And we're ready to connect the sulfur and the engines to blue signs. Now we just need to set up red chips in order to start it all up. <sighs> really? I specifically designed this wall to be as smooth as possible, to prevent you guys from getting stuck. How can you not find your way past this? Anyway, as also the main base could be breached by the next attack again, the red chips will have to wait as we first fix the walls of our base and then take another beautiful nature hike to go out and fully repair the oil outpost. Hopefully it's the last time we will have to do that manually. Huh? You changed target? What? Uh, okay then, after you destroy that wall, will you please move on? No? Okay then, let's go deal with that rascal ourselves. Wait, what's this? An unexpected obstacle blocks our way and it has two big worms in it. Those guys are incredibly dangerous for us at the moment, so let's try and give them a wide berth. If we can still fit through. Damn, it's getting crowded down here. Okay, under loud disapproval of the local Johnnies, the wall is fully repaired nevertheless. Now let's go deal with that pump sabotaging rascal. Wait, huh? Where'd he go? Strange stuff going on here man, strange stuff. But anyway, it solves the problem one way or another. Finally we have some time to build again and we can set up the last blue science ingredient, red chips. Actually we can just copy the blue science design and adapt it for red chips. But despite our recent repair effort the next wall is already breached. We decide to ignore it for now and just finish blue science first. Advanced oil processing will be the first priority. Then we double the red chip setup, but the alert sounds again. Hopefully it's not that breached wall we ignored. Fortunately it's not. So we finish the double red chip setup and merge both belts into one. We won't have enough resources to keep them all fat all the time, but at the moment it's running great. It's about time we fix that wall, but man there's a giant biter attack group just waiting to be triggered into attacking by my presence. Anyway, to get there I first need to walk around this massive cliff. Let's start doing something about that by the way. But if I don't fix the wall, they will breach the wall when they attack anyway. Carefully we inch closer, and perhaps we can place an extra wall to protect the gap. Phew, 
unfortunately that lot. And here's a visualization of the damage of the direct stream of burning flamethrower oil. Pretty hefty compared to ground fire. Okay, the blue science belt is beginning to fill up, so let's start researching again towards construction bots, so we can automate the repair of our walls. And now that the most important science projects are running, we can start producing some more flamethrower turrets for our future expansion plans. Now, if I had more oil I wouldn't be so worried, but our single and very limited oil source is the sole reason to switch to advanced oil processing immediately. It more than doubles the refining efficiency. Not only does it give you 10 more petroleum gas for the same 100 oil, on top of that it gives you light and heavy oil for free, which we can crack into even more petroleum gas. But now that we started researching again, after being idle for a good while, pollution output just exploded again. Now we'll begin the true test of our defenses versus big biters. Now that we no longer use the wasteful basic oil processing, we can refine as much oil as we want. So we can finally add some buffer tanks in the system. We carefully organized three petroleum gas tanks to function as a passive fluid splitter between sulfur and plastics. Heavy oil is made into lubricant, which we will need for producing construction bots. And then we set up a very quick and dirty oil cracking. Please turn away your eyes. We will certainly never upgrade it in the future. Meanwhile, the enemy attack groups start to look quite fearsome. Now, should we research mining productivity too? Unlike the cheap mining productivity one, the next level is much more expensive. And all in all, it will cost about as many resources as that the mines will gain from productivity. So, a net zero result. Instead, let's get that second level of fire damage I forgot and then unlock the personal roboports and faster bots. Mining productivity too, we're going to skip it for now to not waste our time. Then the first big attack strikes. For a moment it looks they will leap over the walls from the cliff edge, but fortunately they decide against it and awkwardly try to run around it. They still manage to break through an undamaged wall though. Now we won't fully automate much more for now. We just don't have the resources and we need to carefully control the production of expensive items like blue chips. We need two more ingredients for bot frames, so we set up some hand-fed electric engines and bot frame assemblers over here. The last ingredient is batteries. Now we need batteries for a lot more things than bot frames, so let's make a lot. Let's start off with a full chest of copper and iron each for 3200 batteries. But the iron mine is really starting to struggle now. Only the core miners are still operational and the iron plates belts have slowed down to a trickle. I mean, just look at my pathetic green chip production. We haven't even achieved automated defense yet and still need to start on our offensive capabilities. We will need much more iron still before we can break free. But yep, it is the highest time to go fix that wall again.
Okay, so you may be declaring me insane now with all my chock full oil tanks, but I really want to keep oil production going. So, let's reveal the great prison break plan. Laser turrets it is. They do need some expensive upgrades to work well though, and while we took out two isolated nests with flamethrowers, there's just no way we can break out with the directional flamethrowers against omnidirectional attacks against continuous biter nest clusters. Especially because we ourselves are not immune to the napalm dead, unlike with gunner laser turrets. Also, any big spitter slipping through could kill us from distance in seconds. We need a less dangerous approach for this. Ha, ah, yes, we finally set up cliff explosives, but for some reason the assemblers are hugging the petroleum gas tanks. Okay, now that we have some batteries, we can finally start assembling some robot frames. Automated repairs feel within reach now. Of course, our bots will need somewhere to live and some tools to repair things with. Soon, walls. Soon. Just hold out a little longer. Meanwhile, we give our future bots access to the walls through a passive provider chest. And we use a super simple circuit condition which calls the inserter to stop taking walls from the chest if there are less than 1500 walls in the chest. But we are down to less than a single yellow belt of iron. And while the defense plan may be nearing completion, we still haven't even begun yet with the offensive plan. Will there be enough iron to make all the stuff we need to even attempt to break out of our prison? Nothing else to do but to push on and we'll find out later. Let's set up the roboports. Ideally we keep them as far from the walls as possible. This will allow the biter attack and the flamethrower fire to finish before the bots reach the wall to repair them. Bots are not fireproof, so this tactic should hopefully limit the amount of bots we lose in this never-ending war. Or, well, never-ending may not be the right word now, is it? I did promise the war will end, and we will achieve world peace someday. But hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves, shall we? There. A little awkwardly placed, I admit, but all robots are connected and even the whole... Uh, <coughs> the whole spaceship area is covered. I guess it's also a good idea to give the bots access to the repair packs, as well as an assorted storage chest with various bits and pieces. And finally, oh yes, we can make some actual construction bots. The big moment has arrived. To work, my minions, to work!
And not only do we have the repair bots now, we also have cliff explosives. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Good night.